All righty. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And once again, we're back here to go through these gospel accounts to see what they say to us, to teach us some deeper revelation than we've not known before, to see things that we've not seen or heard so that it will mold us and shape us and our moon will be stronger because of it all. So hallelujah. We praise you this morning, Father. Lead us by your Ruach. Let your will be done here this morning. Let everything that we do bring you honor and praise. Hallelujah. Brother JV, if you will, read uh, Matthew 7, uh, 24 through 27. Actually, just go through the whole thing because I think there's something there for us at the end too. But uh, And then let us know what your thoughts are. All right, all right. This is Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24. It says, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Yahushua had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Well, I mean, this is... I, I can only remember, like, when I started to read the Bible, and I read this portion... Um, and it always, it just, it really hit me because I, I really imagined a house built not on a strong foundation and the, when the winds blew and, and then I started to think more so towards um, kind of, you know, I started thinking about doctrines and, and every, every wind of doctrine that comes in and people just fall for those winds of doctrines and they don't have this foundation that Yahusha is the Mashiach and and I started to think that way that it, it really encourages me too to lean on my brothers and sisters in the assembly and, and throughout the world that I, I got, you know, we have to lean on one another to, to get that encouragement or understanding and so that we don't get blown away because if we just, if we don't have that foundation, Yosha, then we can get blown away and, and that's that's all I can say, but praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. You know, there's there's so much to gain from this. And, you know, I was looking into this a little bit deeper to kind of get an idea of what it was that it's kind of saying here. You know, when we look at rocks, what is the rock? You know, that's, that's the first place that we need to venture to is to determine because he's, he's telling us something very powerful here and the very first thing that he says is key he says therefore whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them i will liken him unto a wise man right who and then he goes on to tell us who built his house on a rock what is that rock what what is the rock that he is referring to here Let's go back into the Tanakh. Of course, this is where we're going to get our foundation of this rock. Psalms 18.2. Yahuwah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my Elohim, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Continue on. Psalms 144.1. Of Daud. Baruch be Yahuwah my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. You know, we see this example even in 1 Samuel 2.2. There is none, Kadosh, like Yahuwah. There is none beside you. There is no rock like our Elohim. So, uh, 2 Samuel continues with the same kind of uh, theme in 2 Samuel 22, verse 32. For who is Elohim but Yahuwah? And who is a rock except 
our Elohim. We're starting to see the foundation that he's talking about here. He's not just, he's not, he's using the house as an illustration. And, and, and of course, we are a temple. We're, we're, we're the, we're the, the house, if you will, that Yahuwah inhabits, that he placed his name upon. Look at, look at the uh, Deuteronomy. Where was I out here? I've just seen it. Um, Deuteronomy 32, 18. You were unmindful of the rock that bore you, and you forgot the Elohim who gave you birth. It's, it's, it's really becoming clear in Isaiah 51, 1. Listen to me. You who pursue righteousness, you who seek Yahuwah, look to the rock from which you were brought, and to the quarry from which you were dug. He's telling us, this, I'm going to go from here, this quarry that he's talking about, right? Uh, if we look and think about this for a second, what is the difference? What is the difference between or what is that rock? What is, I guess that's the first thing we want to look at because there's rocks, there's stones. We see these illustrations in the scriptures. So we have to correlate them. What are they talking about here? Yahuwah is that rock, right? What is a rock? There's many stones that can come from the rock, right? The rock is something that's actually at the core of, of this earth. So if we look at this in the measure, the rock that he's talking about, which is Yahuwah. He is the foundation. He's in the center of everything. He's the foundation of everything. And then he goes on later on to talk about that cornerstone, which comes forth from the rock. The cornerstone, of course, we know is Yahusha. And then we got sand, which is the smaller grains. And now we start to see this foundation and why, if you're not, if your relationship or your life is not built on a foundation that includes Yahuwah, that includes his word, his Torah, his Tanakh, then you're going to be building it on something that is not strong, it's not stable, it's not unmovable. Sand is little granules, and, the, and, the, and then the water comes, it dissipates it, it moves it, it's not a sure foundation. So we got to focus on the rock. Yahushua is telling us, if you hear these words and you do them, then you will be wise. Hallelujah. I just wanted us to take a look at this real quick because this is the this is really what he's talking about here when he's when he's bringing this uh, this parable to us. I'll, I'll just touch on a couple of things with the cornerstone just because I mentioned that, and we see these. You know, even in the, in the Tanakh, once again, in Psalms 118.22, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The cornerstone is something that's placed on the foundation, on the rock, that gives the building uh, foundation the support to be able to support the structure. That is where Yahushua comes in. He has been sent. He has come forth from the rock to help us to understand how to build our foundation, our home, our existence. And he has to be that cornerstone because he is on the foundation of Yahuwah. He stands for that foundation. He is that foundation because he's the word that's been spoken. So I just wanted to bring these clarities to us. So when we're discussing these matters and as we're pondering it, we're starting to see more of what he's talking about. Hallelujah. I just wanted to, to bring those forth. And then there's a couple other things that I want to touch just real quick before I come to those that have their hand up. Proverbs 10.8 says, a wise heart will receive commandments, but a foolish lips will come to ruin. Proverbs 10.25, when the whirlwinds pass, the wicked are no more, but the righteous are secure forever. Proverbs 12, 7. The wicked are overthrown and perish. They perish. The house of the righteous will stand. Hallelujah. This is the foundation of our belief. This is what it is that we are, are working towards. This is what we are, 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 are seeing before us, uh, how we ought to 
live our lives, how we ought to build our foundation. And that is where we're at today. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to bring that forward so that we're able to see this very clearly. All righty. Um, if I didn't get signed out, somebody just signed me. Hold on. Sorry about that. Uh, Silver family. Shabbat Shalom. Um, um, I just wanted to tie it into another scripture and land back off of what you're saying, because when I look into it, the question that I'm posing to myself as I'm reflecting um, is, you know, how am I doing this? What, what is he talking to me about in this moment? What is he saying to me? Not that I'm just reading over it and then I'm saying, oh, bless is a man that do it. But it's something specific. I don't believe that the word comes forth and it's just coming forth. It's coming, it's always coming forth and it's got a target. It's got something that is trying to hit in your life. And so it's about quieting your spirit, your ruach, and bringing it subject unto Father that you can clearly hear him now. Because we're saying now we're born again and we hear him. And so when he's saying this, I'm sitting here and I'm reflecting and I know the answers for myself. And um, as I listen to each one exhort, I get even more information. Um, and I wanted to tie that into this particular scripture because I had never seen it this way in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, when we're talking about not being on sand, but being built. And other people said there are many stones. Scripture actually says that we are living stones, right? And so Father is building up a a collective house uh, a body an assembly and he's also building us individually it's like so awesome when you look into it in the ruach um because he's he's changing he's redefining he's he's molding he's transforming us so that we are a part of that lively assembly so there's a manifold process that's happening but we have to understand how to cooperate with that process um, and not just to know it, but to cooperate with it in the fullness so that it can be done within us completely. Um, and so the scripture that I wanted to tie to it was in 1 Corinthians 13, when we talk about for now, and this is for that individual as well as for that collective. It says, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And it, it hit me about recognizing and understanding the perfection of charity within you as you are being built. Um, and, and it really revelated out, you know, I need to love him as he loved me enough to change whatever it is about my life. Whatever it is that he's speaking me to, I need speaking to me about, I need to love him enough to change it. I, I don't need to try to hold on to it. I don't need to try to justify it. I don't need to make excuses. This is the way it's always been. This is just who I am. This is just how my family is. This is something I inherit. Nah, whatever it is, I got to love him enough to be built on the foundation, which is the word, because this is talking about me becoming more and more like the word. And as it was talking about seeing your face, he's, it was, I was always looking at this like future tense, you know, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. And it's like that, but then was somehow so far off, but it, it's a different revelation on today. Like, no, but now every time you look into the word, see my face and see yours, see where you're off, see where you need to make adjustments, see it because that's why I'm bringing it to you. I'm not bringing it to you for you to just be like, you know, oh yeah, that's good, that's right. But you know, what am I saying to you? Um, what, what do we need to be building up? And so to me, the practicality of it all is really beginning to come and manifest. And I'm, I'm thankful for it. Um, as I reveal it, I see so many things coming for me now of how beautiful it is to just, you know, make these changes, whether it's small, simple things or whether it's great things. Um, uttering truth, even the more is something he's getting in my mind, like say, speak truth, you know, no matter what, speak truth. 
it's got to be done. Um, it's got to be done in love and in consistency. And as you speak truth, do truth. You know, on on every level in, in your family, uh, in in your in your working, in your going, in your prayer life. In every area, speak truth and understanding your scripture and what you need to be doing is always going to be evident because sometimes we like to put it far off or we may just be kind of misunderstanding what exactly he's asking me to do. I think it's really time to just get in that prayer place quiet, you know, with him. What are you really speaking to my heart? Because that's what he wants. When we say, oh, show me your face, Yahuwah. We're asking him to show us more of him so that we can change, not just so we can see how beautiful he is. We know he's wonderful, but now we need to come up to that standard and there needs to be no longer that mindset of, oh, I can't be perfect. We can be perfected. That is what this process is about. And if we're going to make it into the kingdom, then that's what we're going to have to do. And so I'm, I'm so thankful for that. My husband doesn't say I'm a lot, but he's such a, a beautiful example in so many things. And at one point I was thinking only when people say things, do you see stuff? But his life speaks such volumes to me that um, I recently even made that adjustment within myself to just see the beauty of Yahuwah um, all around me. So I'm, I'm appreciative of that. And I hope that that first Corinthians 13 scripture um, We'll, we'll speak more about the building because that one talks so much about how our character should be um, in love. Hallelujah. Right on point, sister. Brother Rod, what you got for us, brother? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family. Um, praise you I like a lot of what uh, Sister Ina was saying, specifically in regards to our walk. You know, because it's 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 pointing to where our foundation lies, um, and I and I also liked what she said about her husband, my brother, um, in that his quietness. Because sometimes it's a <laughs> Uh Sometimes it's 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 in what we don't say that that, that shows our strength as well. Um, is speaking. A lot of people want to speak sometimes when they should be quiet um, and that peace and that calm. But in regards to the passage in the context of the passage, you know, um, a couple couple scriptures came to mind. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4, uh, it says, And all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them in that rock was Messiah. And we see, you know, as we're, you know, later on this afternoon, we're going into Numbers 27, and we see the, the passing of the torch of Joshua, and we know that Moshe is not allowed to go into the promised land because he struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock, um, and the picture that that shows of our Messiah. Um, but 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 uh, First Peter chapter 2, came to mind because it, it incorporated a lot of the passages, Rick, that you were reading out of Tanakh in Psalms and also in Isaiah. And it says, starting in verse four of chapter two, first Peter it says, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by Elohim and precious, you also, as living stones, that's what Sister Hina was saying, as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepted by Elohim through Yahushua Messiah. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, you too who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of a stumbling and a rock of offense. Um, they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Um, and, and you know, Scripture also tells us, you know, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of Messiah. You know, so 
storms are coming, <laughs> but when those storms come, where are your feet planted? Are they planted in sand or are they planted in a rock? You know, his exhortation to us is telling us that those of us who hear the sayings of mine and does them, regardless of the storm, regardless of the weather, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the situation and what surrounds you, how will you stand? Will you trust in me and what my word says? Or get shaky, sugarfoot, you know, noodle backed, you know, when these things fall down on you? Or will you stand on the foundation of the rock um, so that we can obviously bring glory and honor to his name? Praise y'all. That's some good stuff right there, brother. That's real good. You know, we, we really need to pay attention to what's this saying to us? You know, he, he chooses his words very wisely when he speaks to us, you know. He doesn't he doesn't fill, use filler words and stuff. He, he's very direct what he says. And um, I'm just going to jump to the end real quick, and then I'm going to come to you, Brother Jadiel, if I could get your thoughts. But what we see in 20... Uh, verse 28 uh, and 29 says, and it, come, it came to pass when Yahushua had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he thought, or for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. See, this sets him apart from everybody else. No better, no, it doesn't really matter who it is that was teaching these things back in the day. When Yahushua taught these things, these were these were like revolutionary ideas. People's minds were not on this. They weren't thinking this way. And this is why he had to bring this clarity of understanding to us. He had to, he had to reveal to us that, hear what I'm telling you, because I do have the authority. I'm not like the other scribes. What I'm telling you is going to set you on a course that's going to keep you strong. It's going to keep you rooted. It's going to keep you grounded so that when, no matter what comes your way, you're going to be able to stand. Because you know who you stand on. You know who's beside you. You know who surrounds you, who protects you. So he, he, he's, he's, he's revealing these truths so that we can understand the authority that he's telling them so that we can begin to put them into our lives so that we can see the fruits that come forth from it. Hallelujah. Sister Marcia, Shabbat Shalom. Yes, I'll come to you before I go to Brother Jadiel. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, uh, earlier today, when I think about this text here, I looked outside and I seen uh, have uh, some boxes out there that was broken down. And the wind is so high up here right now that I seen the boxes flying around. So uh, I had to go out there to try to prevent, you know, just a box city in the back. And so what I went to go get was some bricks you know, a rock. And so when I think about this, I, I think about, you know, when when chaos is happening, you know, where, where how am I showing up? How am I showing up? Am I showing up with paper? Am I showing up with the rock, the word of Yah? And so when I put the rock on the boxes, the boxes didn't blow anymore. And so that this hearing this right here and then thinking about that, parallel this morning uh, just, you know, gives me even greater strength to make sure that I am showing up, I am leaning in um, with a rock in mind, with the word of Yah in mind, no matter what's going on, but I, I have the rock in my path. And so that, that was just what I wanted to share. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's a good illustration for us, you know. It will keep us grounded. It will keep us from blowing away when all them strong winds come and that heavy rain comes and the rain start to, to dissipate all the sand around it. And then you, you see that you're on the rock and everything around you is falling apart and moving and shifting and all that stuff. That gives you comfort. That gives you strength to know, hey, I'm all right. I'm all right. No matter what's blowing and coming, I'm good. You who has got me. Hallelujah. That's, that's so comforting. It really is comforting to know that and to, to understand that and to take it back to the simple boxes blowing around. 
that shows you something, even in another regard of the, the usefulness that it, it keeps things in order, you know? It doesn't matter what comes, you have a ability to turn to the rock and know that, you know, things aren't gonna blow away if you're, and they're not just gonna get tossed in from here and there, you know, or to or fro as the scriptures say, you know? Because we don't want to be that kind of person. That our, our, our thoughts can be shifted and changed because of the situations around us. You know, when we have this rock, as Mr. Eno said, the word, that foundation, the Torah, the, the commandments, which he's telling, you know, these are our foundational principles that when we have these in our lives, we're unmovable, we're unshakable. And that's awesome. That's a good, that's a very comforting place because. It doesn't matter what comes. Look at Job. Doesn't matter. He he wasn't going to curse you. He trusted him. It didn't matter what the circumstances looked like around him. I'm sure it was blowing and raining crazy over there too. You know, uh, it, you know whatever terminology you want to look at that. But you know, he stood firm in his amuna, his his faith in Yahuwah. And when everybody else was like, "Ah, you got to curse him. What's going on?" You know, he's like. I trust him. I'm not going to curse him. And guess what? It re the reward came because he was steadfast. He was rooted and grounded. That reward came from Yahuwah because he trusted him. You know, he, he was able to see where his life mattered, where that foundation was for him. And it didn't matter what Hasatan brought to him. Didn't matter what his family and friends said to him. You know, he was like, okay, I see this. I trust I know this without a shout, uh, without any shadow of a doubt that Yahuwah is with me. He made it clear, and we should too. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother JP, Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah, not Shabbat Shalom. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, bring out that word um, in, in the Matthew account, it uses the word beat upon in the King James. Um, <clears throat> and that word, it's uh, G4363. Prospito or pros P2, and it says that it's um, it means to fall towards, i.e., uh, to prostrate oneself or to rush upon. And and it, it it just had me thinking that you know that pressure, and and so it took me to the other word that we see in uh, when Yahushua was giving uh, talking about the the seeds, and he was giving the explanation in Matthew thirteen twenty one, and he said yet. Had he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. But they use the word tribulation, and that's another interesting word. It's really similar, like to where beat down, um, but tribulation is pressure. And so, you know, I was just thinking about how what we're reading right now. It's it's this wind blew, um, and the floods came, and it brings pressure, and and it beats upon us. You know, and, and so I, I guess, you know, the question would be, what is the winds and what is the rain symbolizing to, to others and to yourself to really show that what's going to press upon us and what's going to beat upon us that we, you know, as again, as, as long as we stay firm in the foundation, we can't get moved, but it will press upon us and beat upon us. So you, we have to expect that, you know, and, and Yahushua has always warned us that we're going to be persecuted for his name's sake. And so it's, it's just the truth of the matter. Um, so I just want to share that and uh, get some more of your thoughts. Hallelujah. Well, I think all the rain and the winds are the things that come at us in life. You know, those are the things that are trying to shake us and move us, get us off that foundation. Yeah. You know, kind of same thing we see with Joe. Again, it goes right back to the same thing. Have you considered my servant, JP? <laughs> What would you do if he said that to you? You know, with all of the, 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 the rains of life and the winds that come at you, are they going to make you move off your foundation? You know, that's the place that we got to look at in our, in our own lives, you know. I think that's what he's talking about when he's talking about the wind and the rains. You know, these are things that are going to come hard. They're going to press on us. You know, they're going to, they're going to, they're, if you're, if you're not on a, a solid foundation they they have a tendency of moving you or shifting you off of that you know and and some people get just washed away you know they go and they they, they never come back 
you know, because they lost their, their trust or their confidence because they weren't really grounded in the first place. Oh, yeah. All righty. Brother Rod, go ahead. Yeah, I think we get a, 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 a more clear idea of the wind and the, and the storm because I think, I think it means that what we said, but also look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says. Um, and I'm going to just read a couple verses. Um, starting in verse 12, it says, Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, speaking of Messiah, right? with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, str uh, straw, each one's work will become clear for the, the day, will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work he has built on it endures it, he will receive a reward. Verse 15, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. So we see clearly it's it's based upon the storm coming is based upon also the judgment of Messiah, you know, on the works that we're doing. Um, and we have to be clear about that because, you know, sometimes we say we're doing things for for, for ministry's sake. You know, I'm doing this for God. You know what I mean? But are you really? Or is it just a thought in your head? Is he really leading you to do these things? And the things that are from him that that we that we have and do through the knowledge of his word and the movement of the Ruach will stand his judgment. Those things that will not, that, that are not, will fall to the wayside because they're not built on him. They're not built on his desires. Right, they're built on our own. You know, I think of First Chronicles when when David wanted to build, he wanted to build the temple of tabernacle, and he went to Nathan, and Nathan was like, "Yeah, this seems like a a good thing. Yeah, do 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 what you do what you what your heart tells you to do." And Yahuwah came to Nathan and said, "No, tell him he will not build it, but his son will build it. His son Nathan, right? And we see that later. So." Sometimes we have to make sure that the, the, the Ruach Yahuwah is really telling us to do things and not just saying that Yahuwah is, is telling us to do things, but they're really stuff we want to do. There's a difference, and Yahuwah makes it clear. You know, not only does he, does he make it clear to you, he makes it clear to everybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, we're going to talk about that even more later because we're going to talk about um, Moses choosing Joshua based upon what Yah told him to do and how he confirms it to the people and everyone else. Everyone can see the Ruach and the truth of the Ruach, and they can also see the falsity. You know, so it's very important that we are doing what Yahuwah calls us to do and not just pulling out things from our own imagination or trying to imitate what somebody else is doing It's not for you. Those are temptations that we go through. You know, we see somebody doing an honorable thing, and it may not be something bad to desire, but it's not what he called you to do. <laughs> it's something specific that he has for you, Sister Marshall. It's something specific he has for you, Brother Will. You know, Sister Martha, something he wants for you to do, and, and it's not necessary to emulate what somebody else is actually doing. Now, we do emulate the character of our brothers and sisters that are living for him. But specifically, there's something for us that we have to be in tune and, and seek and pray to the Father and ask him, what is it that you want me to uniquely do for the kingdom, right? So we're not becoming, you know, carbon copies or, or, or actors, you know, trying to read the script of someone else's life, right? So, praise you. Thank you, brother. That's some great points you brought forth that I hadn't even considered. So. That's some that's some good stuff for us to ponder right there. Uh, Brother Paul, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, yeah, I, I reread through the whole chapter again uh, just a few minutes ago, and um, I just seen something a little bit different as well. Um, I I'm in agreement with everything that's been said, and you know I think 
this passage is very powerful because it's very clear instruction. Um, it's basically saying that, you know, do as he asks, follow his ways, work on yourself before others and treat others the way you want them to treat you. Um, it's very specific. And in relation to the fruits, he's not talking about the fruits that we bear, but he's, he's warning us to recognize them by their fruits. And I don't believe that's their possessions or the things they have. I think it's the things that they sow. And when they reap those things that they've sown, you will see what it is that's showing in, in their experience, in their life or whatever else. But in relation to the foundation, I believe he's saying, you know, follow the Torah, do what I say. And, you know, ask upon Father, nobody else. Understand, as Job did, that only Yahuwah is in control of all things. So if we have any issue, turn to Father. If we've got any problem, turn to Father. If there's anything going well, praise Father. If there's anything going wrong, ask Father to help. He's telling us to consistently develop our relationship with Father. And that foundation makes us be able to weather that storm because we're built on a solid foundation. And I believe the storm is, is the things that life will throw at us, the rain, the wind, you know, we, we've got to pass through that storm. But if, if we're based on not following these instructions, then the house will fall, you know, we, we will fall. But the strength to return back to Yahuwah when it starts raining and asking him to strengthen my home, you know, we, we must repeat the process and, and go through the cycle and keep repeating the process until we have a stronger moon to be able to say, I'm doing things right. My father's, you know, allowing things to happen for me to experience something, grow or learn a lesson. And then back to the beginning, follow the process again and again. So I think it's, it's very powerful, it's very important, and it's very clear instruction that, you know, you ignore these things, you're a foolish person, you know, you do these things, that then, you know, you do what he's asking of you, you know, so um, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Hello, you, brother. You know, that's some good points, and as I was reading this back through as you were talking, it, it, it hit me again that he repeated himself here. Uh -huh. He repeated himself in, his, in what he told us that, you know, whoever hears and does these things, he does it again. And in, in, uh, the two verses later, he says exactly the same thing. You think he's trying to say something here? You know, he usually yeah. when he repeats himself like that, he's trying to get your attention to get you focused on what he's saying. You know, he don't go repeating himself just to repeat himself. You know, so I just wanted us to really think about that, too, as what we're discussing here that would make him repeat himself again and tell us that everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them or doesn't do them, you know, you fall into a category here. Which one are you? That, that, you know, that just struck me, you know, as I was seeing this, that, you know, he's, he's emphasizing something very strong. Brother Raj, you wanted to reply to, to that? Yeah, no, Paul reminded me in his in his statement, he reminded me of something else I wanted to speak to from what JP said, and that is because JP was pulling out the words "feed on," "winds," "blue." Um, these are these are engineering terms. These are structural terms. These are based upon calculation of what's coming. You know, strengthening because these things are coming, you know, build to these calculations, build to these standards, because if you build them to these standards, based upon the foundation of the rock, nothing will knock it down, nothing will shake it, nothing will blow it away, you know, and it, it also means back to what I was saying earlier, that we, we consider the things that Yahuwah is saying to us, and we line them up of, of to what we think he's saying to us and what he's not. Because when we calculate, when we, you know, investigate, when we inspect the things that we know that are coming from him, the calculations will match up with what he's saying here. You know, so that when those things come to tear it down, they will not. So um, just wanted to throw that in because it, it spoke to the meanings of the words that JP was talking about. And Paul Connery.
in his, in his statement. Hallelujah. You know, that made me think about another thing. Yahushua was a, con a construction, you know, he, he uh, uh, what a carpenter, you know, so he understood the, the principles of when you're building a building, you know, how to build it, like you said, the designs, mm -hmm. all of the things that go into this, you know, architectural designs and those type of things that make a structure strong, you know, and durable. I mean, we 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 uh, we can see that he would have that understanding of uh, in mean, his natural uh, life of what he's referring to in the spiritual, also, you know. Uh, Brother uh, Stefan, but yeah, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family. Um, this is a amazing. Um, just doing a little bit of research on the cornerstone. Just wanted to touch on the physical a little bit more, of the physical and historical aspect of what a cornerstone is. And it, it's the most important part of the building. Most of the weight um, of the building rested on this particular stone. And if that stone would get removed then the whole the whole building is done for, it's collapsing. Um, it was also a key uh, part in like keeping the walls straight and like some the builders or the architects, they would use the cornerstone to make sure the rest of the building was aligned properly. Um, and so it was just something that held everything together. You know, they would use it to measure, um, if that, if everything's aligned with the cornerstone, okay, we know that all the angles are, are straight. Um, and we see, um, you know, throughout scripture, uh, Israel trying to build, place their security on a different cornerstone on their own, um, you know, on their own selves, you know, they wanted to choose their own king and they wanted to do all these other things. And we see that their cornerstone fell. Um, and then also I wanted to point out in Psalms 127, verse one, it says that if Yahuwah does not build the house, its builders have labored in vain. Um, and also to tie that in with uh, John 15, five, where it talks about Yahusha saying, I'm the vine and you are the branches. He who is not in the, in the, in the vine does not bear any fruit. Um, so I just see uh, just so many things tying into how important um, <laughs> uh, this uh, foundation is on Yah and, and his son, Yahusha. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? The revelations that we're seeing by looking at this and the details and being able to see, you know, Yahusha and Yahuwah in this what this parable he's talking about, you know, we can start to see, like you said, if the cornerstone isn't straight, everything's out of whack. You know, if it crumbles, the whole building falls, you know? So if you don't have Yahusha, you don't have Yahuwah, you got no foundation, you got no cornerstones, you, your building is going to fall. As, as soon as that storm comes in, it's over with. You're going to have to rebuild, you know? And we see a lot of people having to rebuild their lives because of that. So for the ball. Shabbat shalom again. Shabbat shalom. Yeah. Um, yeah, just from the Brother Rod said before about, um, you know, the, the building of the foundation and, and it becoming strong, etc. cetera. Um, but also referring to when you mentioned um, Job earlier on, like, the, you know, I reread Job quite recently and did a study on it. And um, it was just... It, it was very touching for me because it reminded me of my journey. Um, and what was very touching about it, he understood the most important thing of all, that Yahuwah is in control of all things. You know, he understood that Hasatan's attack, Yahuwah was in control of. Anything that was happening to him, Yahuwah was in control at all times. So when things happened to him, he didn't say, why is this happening? Why am I being attacked? Why is, why am I doing this? He sort of said, you know, what have I done father? What, what have I done? You know, what is it that I've done? And um, he recognized that Yahuwah was the person that he needed to speak to when he called upon um, to ask for some form of relief from what the suffering he was going through was, you know, he didn't, pray to Yahuwah and say, rebuke Hasatan, get him away from me, stop him attacking me. He said, Yahuwah, why are you doing this to me? Because he understood the most important thing, Yahuwah is in control of all things. And I think Matthew 7 is, is, is very critical instructions for us 
it tells us basically even with the pearls and the earrings it tells us not to put any false worship in any of the places but it also tells us that we call upon Yahuwah, only Yahuwah, and we keep turning back to Yahuwah, and we keep doing his ways and keep going back. And, and, and that cycle, for me, my experience of, of life, I felt like I was being beaten like iron and then thrown back in the fire. Beaten like iron and then thrown back in the fire. Beaten like iron, thrown back in the fire. But I became strong because Yahuwah wanted me to be who he wanted me to become. And... He wanted me to become the person I am. And even I might have desired to be that person, but I wasn't taking necessary action to be that person. So he allows us to go through things sometimes to strengthen us, to build our house, to make it strong and make the foundation really strong. And sometimes we can misinterpret that as an attack. I used to think, oh, I'm being attacked here. I'm, you know, something's happening. And I used to pray for protection and everything else. But Yahuwah was kicking me and beating me and pushing me in the right direction to make me strong, to make me a, a, a powerful person, you know, so I, I was spiritually strengthened. Um, so all praise to Yahuwah. And, you know, I recommend everyone reread Job, you know, look at Job again. And, and it helps you to see that, you know, all of this beat down that we get sometimes it's just you who are making us go to a next stage, make us, you know, shift into a next phase of our life and learn something new, but ultimately grow, grow stronger spiritually. Um, so praise you who are, and, and it brings us closer to him at all times, you know, praise you who are. You know, that's a great point, brother. That is really a great point that you brought forth there. You know, when you think about how people respond when the storms come, they think, oh, this is Hasatan. He's coming and attacking me. He's trying to destroy me. And you're right. You know, Yahuwah will allow these things. He may even call them to come forth just so that you can, he can improve you and strengthen you, that he can show you and reveal to you things that, that you're weak in. You know, if there's a weakness in your, in your foundation, he's going to bring you some, something to you to strengthen you, to open your eyes to see it. Sometimes we don't interpret that correctly, like you said. Sometimes we, we see it's an attack, uh, and then sometimes it may be an attack, but, you know, the other side of it is you who has allowed it. So just like you did with Job. So we got to yeah. really pay attention to that, you know, and recognize that the things that we go through in life, you know, are, are sent to us to get our attention and to help us become stronger in our walk, to be able to recognize and you know, when you're going through these things, what's the first thing you do? Do you turn to Yahuwah? Do you, do you call out to him? You know, these things should draw us closer to him, actually. You know, these trials and tribulations that we experience in life should enhance our prayer life. We should be acknowledging him in all of our ways, whether they're good or bad, doesn't matter. You know, whatever comes, we know that we stand on a, on a sure foundation that's immovable and that he also will make us immovable because we are an extension of him, you know, he has set us up to be his children, his righteousness here on this earth. So, you know, our perspective isn't always accurate. And that's one thing I think is another thing we can learn from that too. Well, yeah. Brother Jadiel, uh, anything you'd like to add before we uh, go to the, the, the next section of this? I think you're here. Salam Hello? Who are, you looking for, who are you looking for, Brother Rick? I'm looking for Brother John Neal. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, I don't see that he's here, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and move to the next section then. Um, who was that that was calling out to me? <laughs> uh, that was me. I thought you said uh, for me to read, and I was like, "Oh, let me jump on it." I got. I was like, well, trying to "Read my mind, now. brother," because I'm, I'm I'm actually going to move to the next section. <laughs> there we go. You're right on time. I'm with, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm already seen. I'm I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me. Hallelujah. Uh, well, we're going to Luke six. Yes. 
No, I'm, uh, yeah, six, uh, 46 and 49, 249. Let me oh, uh, yeah. pull this up real quick so that I can, uh, I thought I already had it up, but I don't know what happened. Let me share this and then I'll have you read it if you don't mind. One body, one body, one mind. You know what I mean? Hey, that shows right there. <laughs> yeah. All right. There I'm we go. go. Let's see what this section says about this same uh, topic. All right. This is Luke chapter six, starting verse 46. He says, and why call you on why why do you call me master master and do not the things which i say whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them i will show you to whom he is like he is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock and when the flood arose the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it where it was founded upon a rock but he that hears and does not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did be vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. So here they use the word vehemently, I don't know how to really pronounce that word, but it says, uh, according to the Strong's Concordance, this one's uh, 4366 in the Greek. And it says to tear towards or burst upon. Um, but I do want to go back also to verse 46 and how he says, why do you call on me, master, master, and do not the things which I say? And I, and I always like, that's for us today for sure. You know, we, we see a lot of our family members, friends, and even ourselves, um, call upon Yahusha as our master. He's our master. And, and that that's something that's very important that I like the translation when it says master. Um, it really takes it to that level, but it also gives us understanding that, you know, he told the he told the people, you know, when he was talking about the Pharisees, he said, do as they say, but not as they do. And he was telling them exactly, and we can all know that we all do know that the Pharisees were teaching uh, from the scriptures. They were teaching from the Old Testament, from the prophets, uh, from the first five books. And, and he told them specifically, like he's telling us, right? Like even today. And, and I think that's a great statement that, that he just said that do the thing, do if you don't do the things that I'm telling you, then why would you call me master? And so hallelujah to that. Shalom. That's a, that's some good uh, thoughts there. You know, when we see this, and that statement stuck out to me too. I, I I had the same thoughts about that when I when I read that. You know, how many of us call upon him, call him master and all that, and then we end up not doing what we're told to do. You know, that's a position that will get us in trouble every time. You know, if we're not heeding his word and we're not following along with what he's what he's telling us which is what we see here he's repeated himself again and again do what i tell you because if you don't you know the consequences are such you know and this is going to be the moving of the, the the destruction of our our house if you are our home you know our our vessel you know because if, if we're not if we get off track here and we and we get pushed away with the storm where are you going to end up you know when you when you get when you finally reach somewhere where you when you settled again are you going to return back to your the real foundation or are you going to be wandering you know going off into other tangents like we see Yasro, they did that a lot you know he told them this is what you start to do this is how you do it they decided to go do things another way and guess what they got they got uh, blown away. They got dispersed around the earth, you know, all, all to the four corners. So this is an example to us that we need to heed these words because they're very powerful. Fifth family, Shabbat Shalom.
So yeah, your brother. Family. Oh, there you go. So Barcelona family. Uh, well, I don't know if it's just me, but this um, lesson is impressing upon me um, what we were studying last night um, about um, the explanation of the covenant. And I guess it's, it's talking about uh, when um, Brother JP just mentioned about, uh, I guess he was talking about doing the, doing the word, uh, not only just hearing it, why you call me Adonai? And do and do not do what I say, and I guess it's just just really um, speaking to me as as um, I, I was in a conversation with the issue of I don't want to take us off, um, but I was in a conversation of the issue uh, with a brother yesterday about observing the observing the Torah and and versus versus uh, faith um, and not having to observe the Torah. And all of this is just reinforcing that to me. I just wanted to wanted to bring that up. Scripture has a way of doing that, you know. It uh, it'll start triggering different thoughts, different scriptures, you know, different conversations that you had that can kind of tie into what we're talking about. That's how powerful the scripture really is, you know. It can transform our minds, and you're right. It it really does tie in, you know, because the covenant is the foundation of our belief. You know, so if you don't have that foundation, again, you're going to be blown away, you know, to and fro. Scripture tells us that. So you're right on point, brother, with that, what you just said. Brother Rob? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because the, the covenant is based on, on his words in the covenant. <laughs> you know, what we're adhering to. You know, JP brought out, you know, how Yahushua spoke about the Pharisees, do what they uh, teach but not what they do because they were hypocritical they were the hypocrite you know they were hypocrites they were wearing masks and costumes and doing contrary to what the word said do but teaching you to do those things and he also said to them you you if you were of your father abraham you would do these things but you are of your of your father hasatan the evil one because their actions didn't match what the word was saying you know, it was it was it was the opposite. You know, but why are you calling me master, master, and are not doing the things which I am saying? Everyone who comes to me and is hearing my words and is putting them into practice, like the the Shema is is is, is it's a verb. It's it's hear and do. Like it's not just hear it. It's it's here and do it's practice it it's it's our lifestyle, um, and it says I will show you whom he was like you know one of the things um, in engineering specifically with uh, civil structural is you'll see a building or a structure um, and it appears as though it's just sitting on the ground, right? Say for instance, a telephone pole, you see a telephone pole. You know, most people don't realize that that telephone pole goes 15, sometimes 20 feet into the ground. And you only see a portion of that pole standing. So when the wind blows, it doesn't just blow over, you know? And, you know, that's why we talked about the, the, the foundation, the structural, the engineering terms being used in that we are to take heed to what he's calling us to do in reference to his word. So that it's built on that rock that is dug deep. It says, digs deep and lay the foundation upon the solid rock. You have, sometimes you have to dig far into the ground, into the surface to get to that solid rock, to build a foundation to put that building upon. Otherwise it's gonna fall, you know, collapse, so. Yeah. Lots of examples today about these foundational principles and what they mean to us. Silver family. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Um, the one that stuck out to me the most was when you read about why I call me master and that word call regulated back in my spirit. A lot of the prophetic words 
that Father had given through the prophets about not hearing people. Um, I think about uh, Psalm 66 and 18. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, Yahuwah will not hear me. Also, Isaiah 59 and 2, but your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohim, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Um, also, in 1 Peter 3 and 12, for the eyes of Yahuwah are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of Yahuwah is against them that do evil. And the counsel that I'm receiving from this study is don't put yourself in a place where Yahoo is not going to hear you because these these scriptures are real. Um, sometimes we don't get answers because maybe we're in a place where he's not going to hear because he's just not. They they teach it differently in Christianity. They're like, oh, you know, just pray about it. It's beyond just pray about it. You got to be able to pray and hear what he says because I know myself in my own life. He's shown me places where I need to repent in order for him to do what he's asking of me. He's even shown me like in James where I pray for things because he'll give me a scripture and he'll let me see, okay, why are you praying for that? What are you praying for that for? Is that because it's something that you just want or is it because I, what I told you, is this a lustful prayer? Is this something you want to heap upon yourself? Are you asking me amiss? It's like really time to be very serious with him in the word, even as we're asking, even as we're calling upon him, because he has a way in Psalm 66 and 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, right, he's not going to hear me, he's not going to hear it, he's not going to do anything about it, and that's not out of a hatefulness, that's even out of love, because the ultimate point is not just to answer prayers, but to bring us into a point of deliverance and submission, and so I'm thankful, not only for that, but also for if I just repent, um, and I turn, shuva. then it says, as, even as that sister read that first scripture, and my people will humble themselves, humble themselves first and pray, then I will heal your land. And so that, that speaks volumes um, right from that first, first verse where he said, why you call me master? That's what hit me the hardest. They're down, they're down. <laughs> There's other scriptures that talk about that too. People call on Adon, Adon, and you know, he told him he never knew. Is that linked to the foundation somehow? I think it does. You know, if you don't have him as your foundation and you're calling out that you're not heeding what he's telling you, it's kind of a uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Disobedient, but there's a, another term that I'm looking for there. Maybe it'll come for me, but I'm, I'm seeing that it's almost like we're, if we don't, we're rejecting, you know, we're, we're, we're going against what he's telling us, the wisdom that he's given us about all of this. There's a couple of scriptures I want to read real quick, going back to this, that were speaking to me. Um, what was it I hear? Okay, Isaiah 51, one, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek Yahuwah, look to the rock from which you were hewn and the quarry from which you were dug. And then he goes on in uh, Psalms and he says, oh, come, let us sing to Yahuwah. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. You know, the, the, the scriptures go on and on and on about him being our rock in our fortress you know psalm 62 2 he only is my rock and my salvation my fortress i shall be i shall not be greatly shaken not saying that you won't be shaken but you won't greatly be shaken because the storms of this life are going to come no matter what you got to expect them you know we we don't know what's coming day to day but yahuwah knows Psalms 1846 says, Yahuwah lives, and Baruch be my rock, and exalted be the Elohim of my salvation. And Deuteronomy 32.4, the rock, his work is perfect, for all of his ways are justice. Elohim of faithfulness, and without iniquity, just and upright is he. 
You know, when you start to see Yahuwah in a different way, you start to see the scriptures laying it out for us, how important this relationship is with Yahuwah and Yahusha and the foundation that they build in our lives. Everything that we live and everything that we do is in regards to this. We, if, we're not, if we're not seeing him as the scripture is showing us today, as we're discussing here, then you need to reevaluate who it is that you're serving. You know, because he's very clear about who he is and what he expects from us. You know, Sister Ina said it earlier about perfection. And Yahuwah, he were, he, his, his perfection is being worked in us. As we continue to walk in this and continue to hear and put it into practice, he can start to move in our lives. He can start to, to strengthen us so that when we do come against these troubles in life, these difficulties in life, we're not shaken. We have a stern foundation that says, I trust you, you will deliver me from this, whatever it takes, just like Job did. Hallelujah, Sister Marcia. You know, Yahuwah brought, uh, brought back to my mind another visual he showed me this week uh, that ties to the lesson, you know, so we, uh, me and my dad was together and we seen this huge tree that was falling over. It, it had fallen over. But one thing I just, that he just brought to, brought back to my mind about that tree is that while it was a huge tree that fell over, you could see on the inside of this tree, it was pretty much hollow and it was dark. And so when I think about this lesson and I think about that tree, we may we got to be careful not to uh, kind of like what Rod said, um, you know, perp, really kind of like perpetrating, holding on to the rock, but don't have nothing on the inside. You know, how are we showing up? How are we studying His Word? Are we putting in the work? Because we could have a portion of the rock in our hands, but we don't have enough on the inside to stand up and stand strong when adversity and the winds and the rain come our way. So how are we showing up? How, what are we really made of? Do we have the rock and we're built, the, built on the rock and the rock is within us? Or are we hollow on the inside just holding the rock? How are we, sh how, how are we, how are we showing up? So I thought that was pretty interesting. He just downloaded that from this week. <laughs> It's awesome when he downloads stuff like that. <laughs> you know, hey, we got a new upgrade. We, we got a better understanding now, right? We can operate more efficiently. <laughs> That's beautiful. You know, this lesson is really speaking loud to me today. You know, there's a lot of things I hadn't considered either, you know. And, uh, man, it just shows me that there's so much for us to learn and the heat from all of this his word really is beautiful when you really start to look at it and study it and see what it's really saying to you i'm going to give one last scripture i want to, to give and this is a something to heed you know and isaiah 2 10 it says enter into the rock and hide in the dust from before the terror of yahuwah and from mm -hmm. the splendor of his majesty you know, there's a time coming where judgment's coming. He's telling us here we need to hide in him. You know, we need to we need to be standing firm in him. We need to enter into that rock. You know, that has to be our our structure in our lives, how we walk, how we live, how we handle ourselves. Because there's a time coming where we're gonna be where everyone's gonna be in this position where if they're not rooted and grounded in the rock and judgment comes, as I read earlier, they will perish. It's that simple. I want eternal life. I don't want to perish. Brother Paul. Me too, brother. Shabbat shalom.
um, yeah, I just I just noticed something. Um, maybe it's just the wording. I don't know. Um, I'm reading from the Restoration Scriptures, but when he's when he's in forty seven, he obviously says, "Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them." And then in um, forty nine, he says, "But he that hears and does not what I say." So he doesn't mention those that do not come to him and do not hear him as well. And so I'm wondering, like, you know, because we've all got family who haven't sort of received Yahuwah, yeah, haven't heard his word, haven't studied it out, you know, and um, hopefully, you know, he's got some form of um, understanding for them, which I assume, you know, he totally has. Um, but I, it's just a confirmation that, once we read this, once we understand this, then we are foolish if we do ignore it. You know, um, the people who don't know it or haven't heard it are not foolish because they don't know they're still asleep to some extent. You know, um, they may do foolish things like like in, in life or whatever, but he's specifically speaking to whoever comes to me, you know, whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them or who doesn't do them. You know, so I think it's very important that, you know, it, it's for us. It's, it's for people who are, you know, seeking him. So praise Yahuwah and uh, Shabbat Shalom. You know, that's a good point, brother. You know, I think with anything with the word, he's always talking to those, you know, that are seeking him, that he's calling. You know, there's going to be a people that are, you know, they're not pursuing him. They're not seeking him, you know, they're, and we know, you know, if they don't turn from that, you know, what they're, what the outcome is going to be. And I think that it's important and that kind of brings me back to our calling, you know, the, uh, the charge that Yahushua gave us to go, go out and make disciples, you know, of men. Scripture says that, you know, there's going to be opportunity. It's, it's kind of hard to be in this life and not, not have heard the Bible you will the scriptures from someone you know on tv there's i mean it's everywhere so i think that those that don't they choose not to until you if, if it's in his plan draws them you know but there's a lot out there that they're they're just themselves they're, they're about themselves and they really don't have a care or a concern or a belief even sometimes that there is a creator you know I think you came from monkeys or something, which uh, I don't understand. But, you know, to me, when we see these, these words spoken to us, they're speaking to me. You know, they're speaking to you, those that have an ear to hear, you know. He says it, he repeats himself in these sections again, you know, those that hear. What do you do with it once you hear it? If you reject it, you don't put it into action. <laughs> Guess what? You're going to be like, I never knew you. But I called on your name. But you, you didn't really do what I told you to do. So I never knew you. So you're trying to get over by calling me in the last minute or whatever, you know. You who have mercy on him. That's all I can say, you know. He, he has the final say, you know. And uh, I'm just thankful that I'm here learning and that I can put these things into practice. So I'm not a fool. Martha, Shabbat Shalom, sister. Shabbat Shalom. I wanted to share a Bible verse, um, and it's Jeremiah 17, 5 through 10. And I'm just going to briefly um, just go through it really quick. And it says, uh, thus says, and it's from King James, so I'm sorry, but I have to read through it. Curse is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert. And as you go down um, in the Bible verse, it says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spread out its roots by the rivers and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. So I wanted to share that Bible verse because I just thought that it was, you know, it, I kind of connected to everything that we've been talking about. 
Hallelujah. Yes, it is. And we know the, the L-O-R-D, that's Yahuwah, that's doing all of these things. You know, Amen. all of these scriptures that he's referring are feeding us. They're, they're showing us, they're teaching us these principles that he's, that he's revealed to us today. Hallelujah. Brother Charles, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, I have a question. Um, how do you know if, I just want to start off, it's not, I'm not taking this person, I'm just asking the question, because sometimes someone can hear something and they could take it personal or take it out of whatever, but how do you know if the Ruach is causing you to speak or, you know, when should you speak? Because sometimes you can hear that and then sometimes it'll cause you to be quiet and maybe the Father's trying to get you to speak something. And that's the reason why I'm asking because, you know, because I'm starting to see a lot of things are coming from correction. And, and, and if you can answer that question for me, I, I'll show you, show a couple of verses of what I mean. Did you say you were going to share some verses? Yeah, if, if you can tell me, well, um, how do you know it's the Ruach? But telling is asking you to speak because sometimes you should be quiet. And and I, like last Shabbat, I was going to bring out some. I told Brother JP that, but if I'd have spoke, it would have been like I would have been um, being messy with somebody. But it was just a verse that was going to um, tie into what we were talking about. And the reason why I brought it up because it seems like like Brother Ron said and Brother Martha said, it's inside, or the tree can be hollow, or when you put the post down a light pole, you're putting it down into the ground and it's coming. And if you put something down deep, it's in the core, it's like correction. Just like when you're working out, your core is where all your strength come from to get you to stand or to get you to work out. And, um, and the reason why I say that, because when you, you're being corrected, you're able to stand upright. The word comes from the core of the father. His word comes from deep inside of him, and it came out. And the reason why I say that, because he said, he who keeps instruction is in the way of life. But he who refuses correction goes astray. And that's in Proverbs 10, verse 17. In Proverbs 10, verse 29, the way of Yahuwah is strength for the upright but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. And if you break down the word correction, core is deep within from the inside. It's, it's from the middle of the core. And in, in, in other words, and then when you put rection, rection is straight, is, is to cause you to stand straight up, upright. So when you put it together, you are standing strong from the core upright. If you listen to his word, and that's the reason why I was bringing it up, because I, I wanted to know how do you know if the ruach is causing you to speak and not to speak, so just so so it won't cause nobody to be quiet, just in case. Hope I'm asking right, brother. I understand what you're saying, and that's a great question because a lot of people speak on their own accords what they feel. And sometimes people have a hard time understanding or differentiating the Ruach leading them or is it themselves differentiating. First thing that I would suggest is that you pray about it before you say anything to ask for confirmation. Those are the first things when you hear or you think something, you got to get some confirmation. You know, all matters are, are rooted and established with two or three witnesses. So there's going to be a witness sometimes you're going to get when the Ruach's leading you to say something or not to say something, you'll get a check. Because, you know, scripture is very clear. He tells us that, you know, he, he corrects or he, he chastens those that he loves. So he's going to make sure that you're in alignment. And if you don't rush in to say something, because it may offend somebody the wrong way, it may rub them the wrong way, they may take it the wrong way. Pray, ask for guidance about it first. Confirmation. Believe me, something's gonna come up that's gonna stir that in you. And you're gonna know that I need to say something after you ask the Father. In all your matters, it don't matter what it is, you need to acknowledge Him in all of your ways. And then He will make 
straight your path. He will show you what you need to do or not do. You know, when you when you got these thoughts about wanting to say something, what is it pertaining to? What is what is the, the direction? What is the purpose for saying something? Is it is it going to direct them back to scripture? Are you going to line it? Does it line up with scripture? Because if it's not lined up with scripture, most likely it's not the Ruach and it's just you wanting to, to say something or you feel something. That's the best advice that I can give you as far as how do you know? Sometimes you'll hear. You know, I've had all different kinds of experiences on or with this matter, you know, and sometimes I hear clearly what it is that I'm supposed to do. Sometimes it's just a, a thought, you know, and I have to I have to pursue that matter. Is this something I'm supposed to do? He'll give you the answer if you trust him, if you ask him. You have not because you ask not. Pretty much that simple. You know. Now for sure, if it's gonna if it's something life or death or is detrimental to that person, you better say something. Tell them, hey, I don't know if this is the, the real act leading me or not. But I feel like I need to say something. Now you can be safe in that matter because it's you don't know. Then there'll be confirmation that'll come after that sometimes. So there's different ways. It's not like a cookie cutter that you can say, oh, this is it, you know, because he moves and he stirs us in different ways. So I hope that helps answer your question. Praise God. Well, it looks like we are at the end of our time today. It has been amazing. It's been a great study today, and I'm so thankful for everybody's input. It's time for us to say, children, 